Welcome to Sisters Homesteading. We're so glad that you're joining us today. I'm Sarah Hilton from the Hilton Homestead, and this is Hannah Parker um, from Parker's Place. Today we want to share with you a little bit about our garden planning. Um, we're preparing for spring, we're excited for it, so this is just a little bit of our start. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about um, why we garden. We're going to talk about what we've picked to garden with, like the different companies we go through, and then what veggies we've decided that we want to plant this year, why we want to plant them. And then we're also going to talk about where we're planting them. We each have different resources at our house, so we're kind of going in on it together. And then how we're going to store them, process them at harvest time. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the first things we want to mention is that we both chose um, main seed company yes. this year. Yes. Um, I bought exclusively from Johnny Selected Seeds, yep. which is a company in Winslow, Maine. And then it looks like you got some from Fedco. Yeah, and that's from in Clinton. So both of these places are about an hour or so hour from to us. Um, both really local, which we love, and the seeds are going to have better success in the zone that they're, yes. that they're used we to. We love supporting the local companies mm. too. Um, one thing we'll have to say is, Hana did a great job planning ahead this year, and she bought her seeds probably back in the beginning of December. Yeah, I think it was before Christmas. Yeah, I waited until sometime into January, um, and because of that, I wasn't able to get all of the varieties that I was hoping to get. Um, so I definitely weren't my list. <laughs> it's hard this um, year. Seeds are flying off the shelves. But it's kind of fun that we have a little bit of a different variety to work with because like what we were talking about, we have grown provider beans since we were little kids. Yeah. And we do that because they're the green bean that works good in this zone. And so exactly. it's good to stick with what works, right? To be like worth their while. But it's going to be fun to have a different variety and maybe find something that we like even more. So, so it, true. It's a happy mistake. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. It's all going to work out in the end. Um, all right. So what we're planting? Yeah, let's, okay. let's jump into so, that. So, um, I decided to do raised beds this year. My land, one, I don't have a lot of open space and more wooded, while your place has more fields. So, um, and then my ground, my soil is not good. It has a lot of like metal and glass and all kinds of stuff in it. So I've decided to do the raised beds. We've talked about what we're gonna fill them with today, how we're gonna layer them. Um, and we'll get that brought in in the spring. And so I have three raised beds that my husband got me. Um, I'm going to do green beans almost exclusively on one, carrots exclusively on one. I'm going to start with some to plant earlier that we can eat throughout the year. And then I'm doing a different variety that's really good for storing. So really good storage carrot later in the year. Um, I'm going to do cabbage and beets in my third one. And then between each one, we're going to do kind of more vertical gardening. And we're going to use wire to make a little, little hoop trellis in yeah. yeah. between them um, to just save some space. In my greenhouse, um, I'm gonna do some tomatoes, hot peppers, things like that. Cucumbers, we're gonna do some of them here, kind of more of like a slicing cucumber that I want to be able to grab quickly to put into a salad. And then some of the pickling at your house where you have more room. Yeah, so, so where I do have some more open space at my house, um, we're working together to build what we call the vine garden. Um, in the vine <laughs> garden, we're gonna have our pickling cucumbers, we have um, pie pumpkins, zucchini and butternut squash. Um, I'm also growing cabbage, beets, carrots, green beans. I'm um, doing some onions and some garlic. Which, yeah, we have garlic planted right now. Yeah, both of our so places. we'll kind of replant come fall yeah. a little <laughs> down the road. <laughs> um, and then between the two of us, we're doing a whole slew of herbs too. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Peppermint, lemon balm, basil, dill, parsley, oregano, chamomile, lavender, rosemary, rosemary thyme. thyme. Um, we good. might have to but that's the bulk of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some, and then we're also doing some peppers and tomatoes. And like the peppers and tomatoes, we each got a little greenhouse from, for Christmas mm -hmm. from our dad. It's about eight by ten. Yeah. And so. I think we're gonna grow. What are we growing in the greenhouses? Um, so. uh, some kale, arugula. I have some romaine, so some lettuces mm -hmm. and greens. And then um, the more kind of sensitive, warmer climate stuff, like the yeah. um, tomatoes and the peppers, they'll also protect them from diseases and yeah. bugs. And, and I think I'm doing some sweet peppers, and you're doing mm -hmm. hot peppers. Yes. And yes. we're hoping to kind of combine the two with the tomatoes to make some salsa yeah. or something yeah. along those yeah. lines. <laughs> so yummy. Yeah. So we have quite a variety to work with. Yeah. Um, and again, we're kind of utilizing 
the pros and cons of both of our properties right. and helping each other out. Um, like the zucchini is going to take up so much room yeah. for vining, and she yeah. has the room for that. Like she has the fields that we can use for that, um, where I don't have as much of that. And some things that we would love to be able to grow and harvest at some point, like we talked about corn or potatoes. Like, or potatoes, yeah, mm -hmm. those are great things to do. We've done potatoes in the past, we've done corn yeah. in the past. But this year, we decided that those are things that we can easily get locally that are still fresh and everything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't have a whole field to plant with corn. That takes up a lot of room. The same thing with potatoes. I don't have that. I'm working with raised beds. I'm working with what I have. So that's kind of why we picked what we picked and the varieties that we picked mm -hmm. to really help grow in this zone yeah. and be hardy. Yeah, for us. we definitely pick by what we have space for, what grows well for us, and, and what we eat. Yeah, what our favorites like, are. What we'll actually yeah. use. We don't want to waste our time growing something just to be like, you know what, I don't even really like this, or I don't know how to cook it, or I don't know how to store it. Yeah. I don't have time to harvest it. You know, yeah. whatever the case yeah. is, we're definitely trying to prioritize. And then what is going to grow in, in this zone? This is a cold, it's cold a hard climate. Zone. And like when I was young, like 10, 11, 12, I was dead set on growing melon. <laughs> dead set on it. So I tried watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew. Yeah. And they just never grew. Like, I mean, I would get these little tiny melons and the frost would come. Like, it took so long to get warm enough to grow that mm -hmm. they just, they couldn't mature. So, you know, why, why spend the time and waste it on that? You know, that's when you can kind of splurge and go to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> or let somebody else with a great greenhouse set up do that. Right. Our yeah. small greenhouses aren't going to supply that, but we're excited to try them. You know, they're small for the first time to get us started. Yeah. Um, started I think with we're going to learn a lot through the process of it. Too. Yeah. Um, um, and another thing, like Connor mentioned, you know, we're not growing the corn, we're not growing the potatoes, but that gives us a great opportunity to support local yeah. neighbors and farmers who are growing it. Yeah. Um, and whenever you support them and reach out to them, like that time that you spend with them, you can learn so much. Oh, and more is going to come out of it. It's not just the person that you get corn from, but the person that you can ask this question to, or they also know somebody that you can get your soil from. Or, yeah. I mean, it's just great it's to be in the community. Yeah. yeah. And that's huge in small towns and rural towns in Maine. It's, it's important to do that. We forgot to talk about these. This is our oh, first that. year planting. Um, beans that we would use. Like dry big beans. beans. Yeah, like a dry bean. So this is Jacob's cattle bean. We have a friend that did these and gifted us with a jar of them to try. And so we're really excited about doing that. So we can kind of talk about storage now. Yeah. For these, um, we're going to kind of dig up the whole plant and we're storing them in your barn. Yeah, so I have an Eloft this year. Um, Which is exciting. Yes, <laughs> so we're definitely going to use that to our advantage. So in a put an old um, apple ladder that a friend gave me in the rafters of the barn in the hayloft. And from that apple ladder, our plan is to hang our beans to dry, our garlic, um, onions, and then probably some herbs and maybe yeah. some dry flowers too. So we definitely want to take advantage of that new space now um, for drying. And then, like we kind of mentioned earlier, we want to do some canning. Um, canning supplies, kind of like seeds, um, are a bit hard to come by right now, so we've kind of made a list of the you know things that we want to prioritize canning. Um, so we want to do um, pickles, yep. relish for the relish. We're actually going to use zucchini mm -hmm. instead of um, cucumbers, just because what else are you going to do with all the zucchini? Yeah. And, you and it's get super so good. Much. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's so good. Um, we'd like to do salsa, kind of using some of the things that we we're growing. Applesauce, we always go to a local orchard, make our own applesauce, and we'll probably have a poster video on that because we do it without any sugar and it's really yummy. Mm -hmm. um, we've done jellies and jams in the past, but we don't really use it. We're really not. I find that I tend that to much. get them more, which yeah. we do make wonderful Great gifts. Christmas presents. Um, but again, when you're trying to kind of conserve your um, supplies resources and your resources, yeah. so yeah, we might not. Yeah. Focus so I think on with that. those berries, we're going to end up more freezing. Yeah. We still want the berries. Yeah. But um, we talked some about canning green beans, but I think we've decided to blanch and freeze them. Uh, we might try our hand at pickled beets, but again, that's kind of if we have the resources for the time. <laughs> um, so drying things, we already talked about the garlic herbs, onions, um, beans, um, freezing, we're going to blanch and freeze the green beans, our berries, that's what we're going to do. Maybe some rhubarb. Yeah. Um, yep. Um, storage, as far as like a cold storage root cellar idea, we're going to focus on the cabbages, beets, carrots, maybe some apples that we pick that we don't turn into applesauce. Uh, so that's kind of how we're storing. Yeah, pumpkins and, yeah, and, and squash. 
those would be good root cellar storage things. So it's interesting that um, I have, Sarah's house doesn't have a cellar, so we're gonna kind of use my cellar to store some things. Like right now we're even storing just the can. Our supplies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the canning jars that we have and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna use her space to do the vine garden that we were talking about. Both work together to plant and grow those things and both yeah. kind of get the harvest from that. So it works out great that we live like 10 minutes away, but our properties are totally different, you know? Yeah. Like, we and we can them. yeah utilize them and then you can just help each other out plus it's always so much funner doing something you know with a friend and someone that you really enjoy spending time with yeah. it makes um, our goodbye a lot quicker. yeah and i think you know if we had to give like a piece of advice yeah. it's definitely just start with plants that you're passionate about yep. things that you love things that are maybe easy to grow that work well for your space and for your climate um, make sure that you order your seeds ahead of time. If you haven't yet, good luck to you. You might want to get started on that in hopes that there's still something out there to order. Yeah. Um, and again, this is, you know, we like to plan at the end of the day when you're gardening and farming, um, a plan is only as good as the weather yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um, the time that you have. Um, but it's definitely helpful just to get like a basic outline of what you want to grow, how you want to go about it, so that when spring comes, you're ready. kind of ready to go and you have an idea as to which direction you're supposed to go yeah. in. Yeah. So, so we like to say, Lord willing, this is our plan yeah. for 2020 gardening. Yeah. <laughs> and stay tuned so you can see um, what we actually manage on getting in the ground and then harvesting. Yeah. Um, and we're excited to share like our tips and tricks, our successes and our failures. Um, it'll be interesting yeah. to see <laughs> if we compare our plan to what we actually have come fall. Yeah, so be we'll have to do like a video, you know, <laughs> beginning of next winter, kind of like a yeah. recap. Well, this is what really happened. Yeah. This is reality. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks so. for watching. Stay tuned. We have a lot to share.